Today we're going to talk about the worst things about a Doberman Pinscher. The dangerous aspect of owning a Doberman Pinscher. get to it. If you're not careful, this guy will train you. <laughs> He'll take over your life. And I hear that from a lot of Doberman Pinscher owners. And the reason for that is that big personality that he has. That big personality he has. And thousands of years of evolution of, uh, I know it's a dirty word, <laughs> but thousands of years of, of these canines living with us have put us in the position that they can train us. And you don't think that they can't. Don't, don't think for a second that this guy's not smart enough to train you because he is. When he wants something, he's got the puppy dog eyes. He can use those to his advantage. And he knows how to use them, don't you, buddy? He knows how to use those puppy dog eyes. You know, whine a little bit and cry, give you that sad, pathetic thing. It's like a baby. You know, babies were uh, through, through all these years. That's why they developed the cry. And that's why it's so annoying to us. Uh, it's because years of, of evolution have learned had learned us. They have learned us. <laughs> they didn't teach us grammar, but they, they, anyway, they taught us how to take care of these children and why to take care of these children when they, when they cry. And a dog's whine is really similar to a child's cry. And he knows how to get what he wants. Now, it's not the only way. You know, he gets it by all kinds of other positive reinforcement for you to show you love and to show you attention. But if you're not careful and you don't become the alpha of the pack, He'll also try to be the alpha of the pack, and he'll try to bully you around a little bit if you're not strong and assertive with him. So if he thinks that he gets his way because he tries to push you around with his, his weight a little bit, he'll do it. And uh, I know that's not a popular thing to say, but you've got to train him so he doesn't try to do that kind of stuff. Now, he'll try to lead us to stuff. He'll grab a hold of our, our shirts sometimes. You know, he, he tried to for a long time until we let him know that's not acceptable behavior but he'll try to grab a hold of you and pull you. So when she's riding the side-by-side, -side, sometimes we'll be at a knot and he'll be wanting her to do a certain thing like not turn around or something like that. He'll, he'll try to maybe grab a, a hold of her sleeve or he'll bite the tire on the side-by-side -side telling her, you know, stop, you know. And, uh, well, it's not usually stop, to be honest with you. It's when she tries to stop and tries to turn around, he's still got all this energy wants to run. He's trying to tell the side by side, stop that. <laughs> no, you need to keep going. So he will train you. I know it's hard to believe. Some of his training methods are accidental. Some of them is just the love that you develop for him, that you don't want to leave him when you go places, that you don't want to see him sad <laughs> because he becomes part of the family. He becomes a loved part of your family and he's kind of hard to disappoint. That's far enough. Hey, hey, get back here. You know better. You don't go past the garbage cans, you know that, and you know why. You don't go bye-bye? <laughs> you do? You don't go bye-bye? You happy? You want to go bye-bye? Let's go bye-bye. <laughs> you ready? We've got our seats protected by a moving blanket. I think that's the cheapest way to go, the best way to go. It's padded. Uh, it protects the seats. Ah, he found his pig ear from his trip to tractor supply last time. Yeah, you can stay. We're going. Are you going to take it somewhere else? Honey, you can't leave your pig ear here. Come on. We'll get this. Okay. You can't leave it. Come on. No. Who wants to leave it? All right. Call me crazy if you want to, but we have honest conversations. <laughs> we talk. I don't know if you've noticed it, that, you know, it's probably a lot of combination of body language and a combination of words that he does understand and, and situations that he knows, like when I grab the keys and shoes, but he, he understands a lot. He, we communicate, he understands me. And that leads to the point where he tries to communicate back and as he tries to communicate back is when you're you're in danger of being trained uh it's okay he's not going to hurt you and, and i guess i need to apologize for the clickbaity kind of title 
I had a couple click baby and hopefully you look over me for that. So it's fall and West Virginia in the fall is just gorgeous in case you didn't know, in case you weren't aware that West Virginia is just it's just beautiful in the fall. The leaves change colors and the temperature is just perfect to get out and about. Now he loves this temperature. Fall is his jam <laughs> because it's cool enough that, that he's not going to overheat. Uh, it's warm enough that he's not going to freeze because of his fur. So it, fall is his thing. So right now we're getting out and running around. You see him going back and forth, back and forth. What he's doing, there's these other dogs that live and make it really hard to get a good picture of him. But there's other dogs that live along this way and he wants to be social. You know, like we like to be social and we like to see our friends. He goes out now if they're not rude to him he's not rude to them uh, if they're just kind of minding their own business he doesn't bark at them and give them a hard time there's some that live here yeah they were there <laughs> now those dogs have chased him before and that's more of, to me that bark of his is hey come chase me this play. That's not an angry. It doesn't have the growl to it. It doesn't have the stuff to it. it. Doesn't have the I'm trying to intimidate you. That's that's the hey, hey, let's play. That's that part. And you learn to communicate with your dog. You learn to communicate with your Doberman in what he wants and things that he he does by his bark, by his tones, by his body language, by his ears. And I know you're gonna say what's left of his ears. I get it. <laughs> He wants to climb back there. He wants to see. This is just a great time for him. This is his thing. So if you get a Doberman, you definitely want to take him on as many car trips as, as you possibly can. Now, I'm going to say that. That's about our Doberman. Coco brought up a really good point that not all Dobermans like the car. Um, the breeder, one of the breeders that he's went with their female, uh, they've had some dogs that don't like car trips. So it's not just a, a completely your Doberman's definitely going to like car trips. But I'm just going to say our Doberman really likes car trips. He really likes to get in a car and go. And you can tell by the look on his face, like his body language. He's just happy. He's thankful that he's in this vehicle. He's thankful that he got to go. It's just a wonderful day for this guy. Coco decided not to his go on this trip. She was going to sleep in, but we got a surprise his anyway. mommy is behind us. Is she back there? I know, buddy. I know. She's back there. I know. She's following us, huh? Excited? What's going on here, buddy? You happy? Mommy's decided to join us? If it looks like I just jumped out of bed and came, I did. Long time ago. Why didn't you pull over? Why would I? You left me. I told you I was leaving. I didn't want to wake you up again. Then I caught you like way before I got out of the hole. Yeah. And you kept going. I blew my horn too. Yeah. We heard you. We we got it on video, didn't we, Cruz? <laughs> oh, so you did see me. We did. And you kept going? You wouldn't know where to park. There was nothing we could do. Go home. Go home. We got business. I too. I got you some fun. The only reason you got up because you didn't buy your food. I know. <laughs> I heard your truck and I just perked up real quick. <laughs> and then I used leaving. It was gone. I put on pants and shoes and wrapped the stuff. Yep. Yeah. You shouldn't admit that. That's like a confession. Now I gotta write you a ticket. You, well, you just confessed. It's I on the. I could have been lying. What well, don't matter if you lie and confess. I mean, come on. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of this happy face right here to compel you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. So. 
this guy has more power over you than you realize because that little happy face is going to train you to go do things and be adventurous and, and uh, get him things and take him places that he probably wouldn't. So an example is that now that we drive to Florida, we drive 14 and a half hours each way instead of taking a two hour flight. The flight from Allegiant is like a hundred bucks. It's cheaper than the gas. But here we are, we drive and we rent a rental car and pay for the gas because this guy, he's got us trained. <laughs> he, he does. Yeah, he does. Look him up and start barking at me <clears throat> until I get up and then he'll go to the kitchen. And I'm like, what? And he'll bark at me. I'm like, what? And then he will jump up on the counter and take his nose and hit the bread. Now, I'm going to clear that up a little bit. If we told him not to do that kind of stuff, and if, if we, when we tell him, hey, you know, that's not right, don't stop barking, he stops. Uh, and she's encouraged this whole get on the counter, show me what you want, punch it with your nose stuff. She's encouraged it. Um, it's not great behavior to be teaching a dog. <laughs> I don't tell him to shut up, he will for a few minutes, and then he's like, I'm hungry. That's because you're not alpha of this pack. <laughs> when he's with me, we're riding. You know, she doesn't bark very much. She doesn't bark and carry on. Whenever she's driving a vehicle and she's in charge of the vehicle, this dog barks going down the road like it's his job. <laughs> he's crying a little bit right now. Yeah. He's covering up his pig ear. I know he wouldn't believe it. He was insistent on leaving that pig ear. He kept crying like why was it dude you can't leave your pig ear in the middle of the road. He's he's very <laughs> He's like, oh I forgot about this last time. I'll put it out here so I can get it. Burying your pig ear, man? What? <laughs> Made them. I'm gonna say hi to him. What do you think, Cruz? What do you think? Is this a dog? Come back here. All out visiting places. Oh, I think our food's here. Let's go get our food. Hey, our food's here. That you're pulling. Stop it pulling. <laughs> Baby gets hot dog too. Hot. Don't care. We're at Morrison Drive In in uh, Logan, West Virginia. If you haven't been here and tried their hot dogs, you haven't lived. If you ever come to Logan, you got to come to Morrison's, man. What a good boy. What a good boy. What? What do you want? <laughs> Show me. Okay. Okay, show me. Oh. What? what? Okay. Okay, get it. What do you want? Bye-bye. <laughs> the Final Frontier. His ongoing mission. To seek out new lives and civilization. To pee on them. To get treats and scratches. And to boldly go where no Doberman has gone before. home peeing in familiar territory and the lawnmower is back up and working again and Coco is back at her job. <laughs> Let's 
two and a half. Come on. <laughs> 